Mark Daniel Nelson here with Make My Music. Today I have a little interesting topic I want to talk to you about based around at least about 100 emails I've gotten total in the last two years about monitoring. How I listen, do I use any room EQ, do I use any kind of software? And a handful of times I brought up the Trinov, which I've used for about three, four years at this point. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about the Trinov. To be honest and completely fair with you, this is probably the most important thing over any piece of gear you can get, which is how do you hear your music? I think the biggest thing is you have to fall in love with your speaker and understand what it's doing. But outside of that is total control of your working environment, total control of your sonic space. A full disclosure here is I'm not being paid by Trinov to talk about this. This is something that I've just been asked over and over. Why is the Trinov such a important box? Now I'll give you a little backstory. I've had my ATC 45s for six years now. I've probably mixed in one, two, three, four, five, six different spaces long-term with those exact speakers. And when I take the ATCs to a different room, they're gonna sound completely different in every environment. When I was in Utah, I was in a room with my ATCs that was absolutely unworkable, not even close. You couldn't tell what was in phase. You couldn't hear low end except for like 30 Hertz. You could not understand even what the top end was doing because it was all just hazy and blended all together. It was an absolute shitstorm to work in. And they had one of these ST2s there. And I thought, okay, I guess I could just try it out. And if I hate it, I just won't use it. We already had it. And in fact, anytime that I'm in a standstill because of technology, I abandon it just because it, I feel, disrupts any kind of creative movement. What it did was it outweighed by 1,000 fold the benefits because I could hear finally an entire full scale in phase. I could put stuff out of phase, high frequency, and know what it was, low frequency, and know what it was. And that's when I started reading up on what the Trinov actually was doing other than like room EQ. I'm going to explain why this box has been such a massive, massive part in how I mix music. Because you can't all get the perfect room. But what you can do is try to train the room to behave in a specific way, which is basically what this box does. So I'm gonna pull up the little controller and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. I know there's a lot of people thinking that people are out there selling equipment. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to put out facts and describe what I'm doing in my personal workspace with what I use and why it's beneficial and why it's taken me to a higher standard to hear stuff correctly. Because by the time I got this in line, I realized I was hearing stuff I never even knew existed in speakers. And it's a lot of it to do with phase. So let's go in and talk about this. The first thing you do when you get this box is you plug it in, you get your microphone, you set your microphone up between your speakers, and then you tune the room. So you send it through its calibration mode. I'm not gonna go into that, but what it does is it calculates how the function is going to work in the box. And allows you to see what you have before, after, and what it's doing to it. And not only amplitude, which is like EQ, up and down, frequency changes, it's phase and time align as well. All on a spectrum graph so you can actually physically see it. And if you want to get even more crazy, you can go in and hand tune further. Now, the problem here is you have to get past the idea of, oh, that looks weird or this looks weird. So here's my before. The green is left. The blue is right. These are my two speakers, and this is how the room has been analyzed to hear my room right now. As you can see, there is a huge bump in the right channel. 
around 40 hertz. And then there's a huge drop on both channels between 70 and 110. I mean, massive. If I click on phase, you're gonna see it go in and out of phase. This is before anything. This is just what we captured with the microphone. After I calibrate it, it allows me to find what it's going to do. So that is the filter it's gonna put in play within reason. I have a threshold set where I don't want it to go past a specific amount of adjustment because that's when it starts sounding electronic. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to sound as natural as I can. So right away, it's doing this EQ change on both sides of the speakers. If I click in the after, the center line is exactly what I'm hearing after. Now this is just amplitude. If I click into the phase area, this is before phase where it goes in and out 180. This is the filter it's putting in, and this is the after. And if you see right around 100, the right channel is still doing something kind of strange. I've left this in there for this preset because I actually thought it sounded the best. But if we go into, let's say, tweak three, I've got it a lot closer than the other before. This was too electronic. So I like to just go back to the one we had and move on because that felt the best to me. Now, when you set this up, this gives you pretty much any advanced settings that you need to really lock things into your custom listening environment. It shows you where your speakers are, where they need to go, and how to make these calibrated measurements. It's pretty in-depth, but it always lets you save and move on. So you can do all sorts of different tests where I can go and say, here's one with the blind shut preset. Here's one with the blinds open preset. Here's the one with the door open, door shut, Atticus up and awake, Atticus asleep, and then save all those and just listen to what feels the best with you by listening to stuff you are familiar with. Now here is the big difference between a Trinov and any other software that I've used personally, and I've used pretty much all of them. Trinov is just, the thing that Trinov does that just destroys everyone else is the phase and the time aligning to the speakers. Because what it's doing is it's really focusing on how to get every single frequency tight. Before I could say, I have no low mid in the snare and listen to something that I overcorrected in an environment that's correct and you instantly know it's broken. Now, the reason why I'm not gonna get too technical in this is because it's not a presentation about this ST2 box. This is just my example of trying to explain why the Trinov is so special. The other reason why it's so great over any other competitor or any other software that's out there is because of the headroom it allows me to have. The latency is incredibly low. You can set it to the point where it's almost perfection and you still have this incredible amount of headroom. For me, it's all about transparency and trying to monitor in a way that you're hearing things as correct as you can. Because if you can hear at all frequencies running 100%, 80%, whatever percentage that's strong, you might not need to grab a box that you think needs to add color because you're hearing stuff that goes, okay, this sounds great. Trino made this La Remote that allows me to do my outputs and inputs that connect directly to the ST2 and operates specifically off of the Trinoff plugin here. So I can set adjustments here and put presets into the little remote and save everything. I have my mute, I have my dims, I have my mono button, I have all my inputs, and if I had multiple speakers, I would have my separate outputs, which could go into its own parameters. When you get into a smaller room, you're gonna have problems. If I look around here, Traditionally, in a recording studio, you wouldn't have all this stuff, this flat glass here, my television here. Anything that causes reflection is going to cause a lot of problems. So by being able to take that out of the equation and be able to actually go in and adjust each little time it goes in and out of phase. So all these little elements are adding all this problem. But I want to work in an environment where I feel creative. 
I don't want to work in an environment where it's all clean and flat and I can't touch stuff because of if I move a pencil, it's going to mess everything up around me. So I like to have screens in front of me. I like to have big flat surfaces. I like to have a window where I can work when I want to work. And this allows me to do that. And this is a specific reason why it's important and why it always will beat out any kind of software that I've worked with in the past because of specific processing abilities over anything. It allows me to get incredible, very, very high level mastering grade monitoring and very, very, very fast processing for phase with very, very little latency. And it sounds great. It really does. That's my little rant today about something that is super, super important to me, super special, and just have fun mixing. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.